Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation, a nice homemade differential equation. We have d squared y over dx squared equals 2y cubed minus y. And we're going to be solving for y values. Now, this is an interesting equation because instead of the first derivative, we have the second derivative on the left-hand side. So d squared y over dx squared means the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's a better notation. It's more specific when we write y double prime. It also means the second derivative, but you don't specify with, with respect to which variable you're differentiating. But most of the time it's x, so no big deal. So let's go ahead and replace d squared y over dx squared with y double prime. And y double prime is the second derivative, which is the derivative of the first derivative. Okay? So we're going to solve this equation. And I can tell you how I came up with this equation if I don't forget towards the end. Because obviously, when, when I say a homemade equation, you know, I kind of thought about the idea and then made up the problem and had kind of how it prog progresses and so on and so forth. So the difficulty basically is we have the second derivative. So if we had the first derivative instead of the second derivative, I'm not saying this is the same thing, right? We could easily solve this problem because this is separable. Take a look. Y prime is dy over dx. And then this is 2y cubed minus y. You can multiply both sides by dx and divide by 2y cubed minus y. That's going to give you dy over 2y cubed minus y equals dx. And then you can go ahead and integrate both sides and that'll give you the value. Not necessarily y by itself, but at least you're going to get some type of relation. Okay? As you can see, it's fairly straightforward. It's a separable differential equation. You can separate the variables and differentiate and integrate fairly easy. How do you integrate this? You're going to use partial fractions. So you're going to go ahead and write it as y times 2y squared minus 1. It is factorable into root 2y plus 1 and root 2y minus 1. You'll have three factors. You're going to set it equal to a over y plus b over root 2y plus 1 and then c over root 2y minus 1. And then you're going to find kind of like undetermined coefficients. You're going to find the values of a and b, c, and each of these can be integrated very easily. And each one of these actually is a logarithmic uh, integral. Not the logarithmic integral, I mean, when you integrate them, you're going to get logs. Make sense? Because 1 over y or 1 over 2y, 1 over 3y, doesn't matter. Pretty much the same thing. Make sense? So it's fairly straightforward with the first derivative, but we're not trying to do that. We're doing the harder version, which is the second derivative. So I'm going to show you how you can handle these kinds of problems. And if you can come up with a problem like this, that would be awesome. And please share with us in the comment section down below because I'm always looking for nice problems. And if you suggest a problem, which you can directly do in the comment section, which is faster, or through the form, which I barely look at, uh, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, come up with a nice problem and we'll just make a video about it. Okay, cool, cool. Let's see how we can solve this problem now. First of all, I'm going to write it one more time. y double prime is equal to 2y cubed minus y. Now, there's a very critical step. And I'm not sure if there's another way to do it. If there is, please let us know. Always feel free to comment. Now, the method depends on getting something that is easily integrable, which means we want to get something that is the derivative of something. I don't know if that makes sense. For example, if we had 2y, y prime, that would be the derivative of y squared. Make sense? Do we have 2y, y prime? No, we have y double prime. Very, very different, right? But we can get there. Hopefully, this should give you an idea on how to proceed. We're going to multiply both sides by, ready? For the hocus pocus method magic, we're going to multiply by y prime. Let's do it. Multiply by y prime and multiply by y prime. Now, this does two good things. On the right-hand side, it gives us the derivative of something multiplied by y prime, which is good because we're going to use the chain rule to integrate it, kind of like unchain, right? And on the left, we have a nice product, which again can be written as the derivative of something. And what is that thing? This part is very critical. You have to be care careful. How do you get y prime and y double prime together? From y prime squared. If you differentiate x squared, you get 2x. 
if you differentiate y squared, you get 2y, but then you, but then you multiply by y prime because of chain rule. That's what I mean by chain rule on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, though, if you differentiate y prime squared, you get 2y prime times the derivative of y prime, which is y double prime from chain rule. Uh-oh, we're super close. And then we can go ahead and divide both sides by 2, right? So here's how we're going to write it y prime times y double prime is going to be written as y prime squared, the derivative of that, divided by 2. And if you differentiate, you're going to get exactly that. Make sense? What about the right-hand side? Well, it's the derivative of y something. Because of the chain rule, y prime is going to come up. So let's just integrate this. This is going to be y to the fourth uh, over 2, because it's 2y to the fourth over 4, which is y, four, y to the fourth over 2. And if you differentiate this, you're going to realize, uh-oh, we're getting the same thing. Of course, with y prime, it's going to be complete. And then for the y, we're just going to put y squared over 2. Awesome. This is good enough because, again, if you differentiate this, you'll get that, including y prime from chain rule. Make sense? Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and try to, oh, by the way, this is not the answer. This is supposed to be the derivative of that, of course, right? obviously. Now we have derivatives on both sides. So we can actually integrate. That's going to give us y prime squared over 2. By the way, 2 is unaffected because that's a constant. And this part is going to be y to the fourth over 2 minus y squared over 2. Now, here's the critical part. That's the super duper critical part. There's going to be a constant c, right? Cool. Let's multiply everything by 2. y prime squared is equal to y to the fourth minus y squared plus 2. Let's call this c1, and this is going to become 2 times c1. c1 is a constant. Eventually, at the very end, I'm going to replace it with c. But since we're going to change the constant over, over, I mean, it's going to be multiplied. It's going to be square rooted, whatever, so on and so forth. I want to hold on to the c at the end, OK? All the way until the end. Great. So at this point, you can go ahead and square root both sides and just assume that everything is positive. We're making some assumptions along the way. Then we're going to get something like this. Obviously, along with the C1, this is going to be a pretty difficult integral. Let me tell you why. If you write this as dy over dx and then do the separation of variables, you're going to end up with something like this. dy over y square root of y to the fourth minus y squared plus 2c1, which I can turn into another constant instantaneously, equals dx. Now, you can integrate both sides, but the integral on the left is actually pretty hard. The problem is we don't know the value of c1, right? That's the critical part. That's why this problem is fairly hard. You can turn it into a perfect square, like try y to the fourth minus y squared plus 1 fourth plus 2c1 minus 1 fourth, which is another constant. This becomes a perfect square. But again, this has a lot of complications. But I'm going to show you the result from, well, from alpha at the end. You'll probably realize how difficult this can get. But let's make an assumption to simplify our work, which is what if C1 is equal to 0? In other words, we don't use a constant. Obviously, do we have the option to do it? Yes, if they gave us some initial condition, it might as well work. But let's just assume C1 is equal to 0. From here, we get something super duper nice. That's y prime is equal to that. Of course, I'm going to assume y is positive, and I'll take out a y. And inside, we're going to have y squared minus 1 under the radical. And now we're going to write it as dy over dx and start the integration process. So separate the variables dy over y times the square root of y squared minus 1 equals dx. And now let's go ahead and integrate both sides. Now, to integrate the right-hand side, it's super duper easy. The left-hand side. To integrate, I'm going to use trigonometric substitution because trigonometry is fun, don't you think so? y equals secant theta, dy is equal to derivative of secant, which is secant theta times tangent theta, d theta. So we're going to go ahead and replace dy with that, secant theta, tangent theta, d theta, divide by y, which is secant theta. Here, secant squared is going to be subtracted 1 from it. So secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. Square root of tangent squared is tangent. So I can just assume again tangent is positive on that interval, so on and so forth. And everything cancels out. And we have to integrate d theta. But it's just 
theta plus a constant, right? Wait a minute, what does theta mean? <laughs> well, if y is equal to secant theta, theta will be arc secant y. Hmm. That's interesting. So how do we go about solving the rest of the problem? Wait a minute, do I need to find theta? Probably not. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's first, um, we got the integral, and what is that equal to? Theta is equal to x plus c. What is theta, right? Okay, that's a good question. Theta is arc secant y. Okay, so we can kind of write this as arc secant y, but that's not necessary, because you know what? We can secant both sides. Let's secant both sides secant both sides, and we're going to get secant theta, which is y, y equals secant of x plus c. And that'll be the solution. Of course, c is another constant, but guess what? We made an assumption because otherwise we would have to deal with lots of complexities. Take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha. This is only part of the problem. I mean, part of the solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.